What's up everybody, I am Liam Clisham and today we're gonna have another exciting quick tip tutorial for Redshift about how to get infinite floors. We have three different options, so let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, now that we're inside Cinema 4D, let's break down our scene. So we have an area light and another one. One's doing purple, one's doing green. This dome light in the background here, so if I turn this off, I'll go dark. And then we've got a capsule and a disc for our floor. So the way we're going to do this is there's three different ways to do it. There's one with using a redshift tag. There's one with a redshift material that uses a shadow catcher. And then there's another hybrid approach that I've kind of figured out that I actually kind of like a bit more. It allows for some more um, useful textures on the floor than what we're going to get with the first two options. But in case you want to use the first two options, let's go over those. So really quickly, we're going to create a light material for our dome. And as soon as I throw this on here, you're going to see the scene just gets blown out. Don't worry about that. That's okay. So what we need is a gradient. And if you've ever seen any other tutorials about how to make an infinite floor, it's very similar. So normally if we want a gradient, we grab a ramp and we bring this in here and try and attach it. And it's going to want to go to our shadow transparency, which is not what we want at all. So let's kill that. So how do we get a ramp? Well, C4D has ramps built in and they're called gradients. So let's see if that works. If I go in here, backplate, texture. All right, so far so good. What I'm going to do is come into the dome light, go under general, and just turn this off. Because we don't need it emitting any light. We're going to have our own lights to control that. So let's turn that off. But we still don't have our gradient. So what we're going to do here is come into gradient, turn that on. And we're going to set it to circular. So we get that nice circular gradient. I'm just going to make sure this is enabled in here. And there you go. And you can see our circle right back there. And just to show you what's happening, I'm going to make this something fancy. Let's make it this red here. You can see it goes red. We don't want a red. We want something closer to like a 50% gray. That way it kind of tricks our eye and has this nice blend. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring this out some and maybe make this into a linear knot. So it's got this nice smooth grade to it. All right, so that's all well and good. Let's throw a material on our floor and see what happens. So if I throw this onto our disc here, you'll see we get this reflection and that's looking pretty good, I guess, but it doesn't really give us an infinite floor. We still have this fall off here and that dark shadow. So what we're gonna do is throw a redshift tag on that floor and we're gonna start using our mats. So we come in here and do override and then hit general and immediately we start to get some success. However, we don't get any shadows. It just kind of looks like this is floating there. And they've made it really easy for us just by enabling shadows right there. And so there we go, we get our shadows and you can start to play with these a little bit more. If you wanna have secondary lights or rays reflect off the, the mat here onto this. If we turn on a bucket rendering, you'll see it affects it just a little bit, not, not really. If I turn this on here too, it doesn't really do much. So you can play with these options. Um, I found the next option to be a little bit more successful. It lets you control some reflection a little bit more and it doesn't just make this perfect infinite uh, floor. So let's kill that, kill that there. And we're going to go in and create a new material again. We'll throw it on our disk. And I can get rid of this tag now. Turn off bucket rendering. There we go. So the way we're going to do this one is there's a built-in matte shadow catcher. So let's go ahead and do a search for shadow. And you'll see right here, matte shadow catcher. We can kill that. I'm gonna use my hotkey to connect that there. And you'll see it gets completely blacked out like a mat. So if we wanna start using some more options and see our infinite floor come through, we can do background is our environment. 
and there we go. But we get some cool options underneath here that we don't get in the other one. So we can catch diffuse. We can catch our shadows, which is already turned on while we have that. We can catch reflections. So if this was reflecting anything, let me just go ahead and throw on material for our capsule. You can see down here, it's catching reflections off that. And just to make this really reflective, let's go ahead and do like a platinum. If I change our angle a little bit, turn this on, we should get some reflections on the floor there. Just a little bit. I think I would need some stronger lights going at the moment. And then we're going to go back into this material here for our shadow matte catcher. And we can enable ambient inclusion as well. So now you'll see we really start to get that reflection because we have ambient occlusion kind of giving that separation in between. So we've got the shadow and then of ambient occlusion and then we've got our reflection on top of that. And you can control this a little bit more. So if you want to go out a little bit further, turn that on, the ambient occlusion will spread out just a little bit further. I guess it gets a little too far with even one. So we'll just leave it at zero. So that's our second option. And our third option, which I like the best and is kind of a gimmick, but it, it really helps control texture, is to use the overall opacity of a uh, material. So I'm gonna make another material. I'm just gonna name this one opacity so we're not getting confused by everything else. If I could type correctly, there we go. Throw that on our disk. I'm going to change our angle a little bit so we can see the horizon. All right. And we don't need bucket rendering. So for this, we can actually use a ramp. Come in here, grab our ramp. And I'm going to set horizontal to circular, just like we did before with the C4D gradient. And grab this, bring it over to our material, Go down to overall right here and you'll see all these options and we want opacity color. So as soon as I do this, you'll see almost all of our floor disappears except for this edge back there. And that's just because this is inverted. We want to invert our knots and there we go. And so now we can start to play with this a little bit more, feather it out so we don't get that harsh ring. And once we turn on our bucket rendering, this should smooth out a little bit more. And so the thing that I like about this is the control that we get over it. So let's go in and say we want to do uh, aluminum. We can change it to an aluminum floor and we still get this nice fall off effect. And we can do what we did before where we can change the gray value of this. So if I want to bring it up just a little bit, control our fall off that way, smooth it out some more. And you're going to really want it to go to an all black at one point. So why don't we just do all black right there. Get a little bit more control with it. So now you can see that we can control this a lot more than we were able to before with either one of them. So now we can have any kind of floor type that we want and control how far this falls off. I think this gray in there might be just a little too much. So I just turn that off. And if I pull back out, you can see exactly what I mean. And because we have these two lights there, they're going to be harsh, of course, we'll get that line. But if I turn bucket rendering back on, it will smooth back out. You can see how far that disc goes. Maybe we just want to bring it into like 500 centimeters, not too wide, something like that. If we want to go back in close again. Then we still have that shine that we want plus an infinite floor. All 
All right, that's it for this week's quick tip tutorial for Redshift. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. I'm really good about following up and checking in. Speaking of questions, every week we do Redshift Live Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central Time. So you can come, chat with us, get live feedback. I'll talk about the tutorial that we did this week and then any questions, it's just kind of an open forum. We got a live stream of chat and I start answering questions rapid fire and seeing if we can work through some problems. Um, there was just a new Redshift update released yesterday. So there's gonna be a lot to talk about this week. Um, I know there's new nodes and some randomize randomization features and things like that. So this week should be particularly fun. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining in and supporting us, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Brograph.com, an online resource for learning Cinema 4D, After Effects, and other motion graphics tools specifically catered to help you prevail as a motion graphic designer. What's up, bros? Welcome to another Brograph motion graphics tutorial. With tutorials, plugins, and now a podcast with tens of thousands of listeners worldwide. Yeah, it's a great community to be part of. We give you professional time-saving tips, industry news, interviews, shortcuts, and lessons that help keep you current in the world of motion design. Throw in HDR Studio, take the render settings, pick the HDR, put a reflection, and gorgeous. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Our weekly long-form podcast will give you the latest news, help you in your file management, hardware configuration, and client relations. Learn about the latest render engines, modeling techniques, and workflow integration while staying entertained. Real nice banana. <laughs> That's so funny, all right. I'm gonna live forever. <laughs> Our BroGraph talks are a chance to see the way industry leaders from around the globe are changing the face of motion design. Sometimes you gotta make stuff that you're not gonna put on your reel, and I'm not here to judge. The podcasts and talks include people like People, Barton Damer, Nick Campbell, Andrew Kramer, David Ariev, Chad Ashley, Paul Babb, EJ Hasenfrost, Mitch Myers, Chris Schmidt, Jules Urbach, Cornelius Dammert, David Brodeur, Andy Needham, Caitlin Kaju, Zubair Parker, Noseman, Ryan Bean, Casey Hupke, Nick Lyons, Sage, Joey Corinman, Jeremy Cox, Rick Barrett, John Dickinson, Matthias Omotola, Patrick Gosky, Brandon Clements, Steve Teeple, Tom Glimpse, Patrick Longstrom, Julia Simone, Devin Coe, Al Heck, and even Dead Mouse. You get that render done. Yeah, you better frame frame what? Our BroGraph breakdowns go behind the projects and give you an insight on what it's like to manage and maintain your own personal business or work for a large company. Join us for live sessions, check out our useful plugins, watch time-lapse projects, interact with us, and send us email questions and topic ideas. Or just hit the rando render button and do an imaginative daily that'll keep you on your toes. Take all your dreams and let's do it! Subscribe today and get automatic updates on the latest tutorials, tricks, tips, and inspiration brought to you by industry professionals Dave Koss and Matt Milstead. We don't care how you get here, folks. Just get here. Subscribe now to BroGraph Tutorials. Pretty good, I guess.